an inferno, engulfing the most iconic Gothic cathedral in all of Europe. Prince's president said a part of us is burning. Like I saw a lot of people crying on the streets and it's all because it's the symbol, it's the symbol of France, it's the symbol of generation. On April the 15th, 2019, Notre Dame caught fire and it might never be the same even when it will be reconstructed. It's the end of an era for Notre Dame, and possibly the beginning of a new one. However, it's a huge loss from an historical and artistic point of view. People like me, who saw its majesty in person, feel luckier than ever, because we could experience a piece of history and art in its original glory. It's difficult to describe the immense experience of being there, of being inside such greatness. But in a way, it can still be experienced in the meantime it gets restored, or in case you never had the chance to experience it. You can watch documentaries, you can see movies, uh, or you can play the video games. That's what we're here for. There are quite a few ways to experience Notre Dame as if you are in there. Of course, not every representation is completely faithful and some liberties needed to be taken by the developers, especially for copyright reasons in regards to the art that adorns the cathedral. In any case, we are not going to do any detailed comparison here but the sensation of actually being inside Notre Dame is priceless enough. So I really wanted to pay a personal homage by listing 10 video games where you can actually explore Notre Dame in Paris, whether it be from the outside or the inside or both. The list is purely subjective as it's based mainly on my own preferences. I will try to order these digital recreations of Notre Dame, starting from the one that had the least impact on me, to the one that is the most ambitious recreation of Notre Dame yet. And of course I will also speak a little bit about the game itself, if it's worth it or not, and this will also play a small part in the drafting of the list. Of course this is my humble opinion, and I can't stress this enough. Of course, if you think otherwise, uh, you are more than welcome to let me know in the comments down below. The parts where Notre Dame appears might also be a little later in that specific game, so I will not try to spoil any part of the plot leading up to that point. Of course, there will be some obvious entries, like Assassin's Creed Unity, but speaking of which, it will not be number one on this list. No! Why? Well, you will find out soon enough as there are some entries here and there that might just surprise you. So without further ado, let's get started. Number 10. Dark Romans, The Hunchback of Notre Dame I'll be freed from this form, and the Cardinal will finally experience my suffering. It's too bad you won't see it. Farewell, Captain. We start off with a magical and somewhat darker take on the classic novel The Hunchback of Notre Dame, properly called Dark Romance. It's one of those classic hidden object puzzle games that are so popular on mobile phones. You move like in the Myst series from screen to screen, exploring each location in first person in search for items to use somewhere else, just like in any point and click adventure. Every now and then you are treated with a cutscene that helps progress in the story. As usual in this kind of games, the animation is barely there, but the art style is quite remarkable. This will be useful. Of course, the cathedral is present in here, again in a very stylized way. It's a pretty magical way to portray it, as you can see, so it's nice to see a different version. And the smooth lights and calm music convey a very hey, melancholic Frederick, atmosphere. Me, Don't recognize me? That's because Quasimodo turned me into this stone beast! Number 9. The Dark Side of Notre Dame In the ninth position we appropriately have 9, 
The Dark Side of Notre Dame, another puzzler on the same vein as Dark Romance, with hidden object screens. While it might seem more of the same, this actually has an even darker and more melancholic tone than Dark Romance, also because of the plot, which I won't spoil. This game actually came before, but the art style is still spot on and feels like everything is painted on canvas. Needless to say, I love it, and I think it really suits the gothic aesthetic of the cathedral. Whether you see it from afar or up close, the atmosphere will leave you breathless. Number 8. Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame It was a pretty obvious choice to include a tie-in based on the Disney movie The Hunchback of Notre Dame, considering that most of the events takes place inside the cathedral. While in the game itself you can't really explore that much, some of the minigames do take place in one part or another of the cathedral, or with it in plain sight anyway. Interestingly enough, aside from the main and most known PC version, which is the one that I played as a kid, there is also a version for the original Game Boy, which also includes exclusive minigames. Speaking of which, I've been highly undecided on whether to put a Super Hunchback for the Game Boy over this one or leave it completely out of the list. To be honest, even though Super Hunchback is definitely a better game in my opinion, I decided to go for the game that depicted Notre Dame the closest to its real counterpart. See you next time. But there, take it as an honorable mention. Super Hunchback is a great game. Go and play it. Number 7. The Saboteur. In a France occupied by the Nazi forces during the World War II, our hero on a mission to save his nation will make a short stop at Notre Dame to snipe the enemies and free it from their occupation. Sadly, we won't be able to visit the interiors, but it's still enjoyable to be able to walk on the roof and admire the external parts, even if they're not really that much detailed. Just watch out for the enemies, because this place is packed with Nazis. Something that I didn't think about is that apparently Notre Dame is a very good spot for sniping, and it does make sense given its incredible height. Regardless of which time of the day in game you choose to pay the visit, it is always a spectacular view. Number 6. Eagle Flight Eagle Flight is an interesting first-person bird flight simulator, where you control an eagle flying on a post-apocalyptic Paris set in the near future. Of course this means that not only you can fly across and freely explore Paris, but also see Notre Dame from above. The city itself is filled with nature and animals with no trace of human life. Aside from the free flight mode, there is also a story mode, which of course, being a sort of flight simulator, includes some rings to fly through. I mean, this wouldn't be so much of an issue if Superman 64 didn't leave a permanent scar in my psyche when I was little. Well, let's see how Notre Dame is portrayed in this game. It seems a pretty faithful reproduction and after all, at Ubisoft, they are masters in this kind of things. It's a shame again that you can't really explore the interiors, but considering that this game is about birds and the experience of flying, also programming the interiors would have been both costly and probably beyond the scope of this game. And it's also very nice to see wild animals and wildlife in general close to, and in some cases, on the cathedral itself, as it gives a whole different feeling compared to other versions we've seen in other games. 
At the same time, I can't help but noticing the irony of Notre Dame perfectly surviving the sort of apocalypse that erased mankind in the game, when in our reality it almost got irreparably damaged by a human mistake. Number 5. Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance is another chapter in this long-running series that successfully fuses two very different worlds such as Disney and Final Fantasy, while the main characters that drive the story are all new. Speaking of Disney, this means that we have yet another chance to explore Notre Dame thanks to the portion dedicated to the movie The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Compared to the previous Disney's Hunchbacks game for PC and Game Boy that we talked about earlier, this time we can actually explore quite some parts of Notre Dame freely. To be honest, the textures are not really that detailed and everything is pretty basic also in terms of overall internal arrangement, like the lack of furniture inside that makes it feel pretty empty. But at least, you know, there is an inside. Especially compared to the previous entries on this list, I also get that too much furniture on the main hall would have gotten on the way of the combat dynamicity and more simply, the fun. Especially considering the particularly choreographic and extravagant combat system in this specific episode, where you can wall jump and slide before attacking enemies. Overall, there is quite a good chunk of Notre Dame that you can wander around. You can explore the main door, the main hall, the bell tower and even the balconies. This that you're seeing now is actually my favorite part, because you can see very much of the exteriors of the cathedral and notice that the overall structure is quite there. To me, as of now, this stands as the best way to actually explore and enjoy Disney's vision of Notre Dame. Number 4. Time Splitters 2. In this awesome time traveling first person shooter, you can visit the Notre Dame of 1895 once you reach the third level. You start exploring the basement on your way up to the main hall. From there we can see a pretty dark version of Notre Dame, with lots of dark greys and not really super accurate in the arrangement and texture details. I still find it interesting because it represents a different take on Notre Dame. The whole atmosphere is darker, also considering that it's full of monsters and zombies that we need to fight in order to reach our destination, all while rescuing provocative maidens from an evil cult. You can even meet the famous Quasimodo even though I'm not really sure what he's doing there in 1895, but again, accuracy is clearly not the top priority here, considering that he's also wielding a shotgun. Well, I guess all help is good when you're facing a horde of zombies and a giant monster. That one's actually a pretty epic battle. On top of that, it's nice to be able to explore a little bit of the outside and see the characteristics external arcs and the storm gives an incredibly unsettling vibe, as if zombies weren't giving enough of it. Overall, not really the best representation in my opinion, but still worth checking out. Number 3 Onimusha 3 Onimusha 3 is the third chapter in the famous samurai series from Capcom. This episode stands out compared to its predecessors because, 
thanks to a plot revolving around time travels, it actually fuses the feudal Japan with modern France. We can't even meet and play as Jean Reno. The level of coolness goes sky high when a Samonosuke we are kindly invited to visit Notre Dame, and it's represented fairly well. We start from the external part and we can already admire some pretty accurate graphics, however, we are too close and can't really move the camera around enough to admire Notre Dame in its entirety, which is a bit of a missed opportunity. The fun starts when we get inside, where we can appreciate its majesty a little more than from outside. Also, the lighting effects are pretty evocative, especially candles and windows. Sadly, we won't be able to explore too much of the real cathedral, as it won't take long before reaching some demonic basement that has nothing to do with the real deal, unsurprisingly, considering that the plot revolves around battling against demons. It's a short but sweet visit nonetheless. Number 2. Assassin's Creed Unity Ok, here is the real deal, the one we all saw coming. Assassin's Creed Unity. Obviously, it's set in France in the late years of the 18th century, the time of the French Revolution and its counter-attack the Thermidorian reaction. Fairly early in the game we can explore Notre Dame and oh my god, what a sight to behold! This is by far the most accurate digital representation I've seen in a video game. And it's evident that the amount of work that went into recreating it so meticulously was immense. So much so that it took senior level artist Caroline Nuss more than two years of work on Notre Dame alone. But this incredible effort not only is allowing players to experience a hugely detailed Notre Dame comfortably at home, but also, in light of the terrible fire that almost destroyed it, it will be of great help for the actual physical reconstruction. In other words, Unity's Cathedral is so accurate and true to the original that its projects can be used as a base for the real Notre Dame's restoration. It is the first case in history, as far as I can recall. On top of that, the people at Ubisoft also made Unity's PC version available for free for a limited time, along with invitation to donate for the reconstruction, and they themselves donated $500,000 to the cause. What else can be said about a video game that has achieved this much, other than it even has a whole limited edition dedicated to Notre Dame? It comes along with other stuff, with a beautiful package resembling Notre Dame and a statue of Arno, the main protagonist. And the best part is that the package itself can be used as a background for the statue. Ok, so we understand that Unity shows an unprecedented level of accuracy when it comes to Notre Dame's fidelity and it is an incredible achievement for video games in general. So what could possibly top this one out? Number 1. Minecraft Minecraft is a sandbox game that allows you to create your own world and uh, Ah, oh, come on, who doesn't know Minecraft? It's been seen virtually on any gaming platform since its release in 2011. Even non-gamers have somehow heard of it. And for good reasons. I don't want to state the obvious, so I will just say that its creative freedom allows anybody to build anything. So it shouldn't really be surprising that there are many amazing representations of Notre Dame. This gives a whole new meaning to the digital recreation of Notre Dame, even more so after the incident. Not only you can explore many different versions of the cathedral, but you can also build your own. You wanna give it a magical atmosphere? You can! You wanna make it goofy and cartoonish? You can! You wanna give it a slightly darker vibe? 
You can! There is literally no limit. And the fact that Minecraft is virtually on any platform, yes, even your cell phone, means that literally anybody can play and build their own personal Notre Dame and call it their own. Just look at what these guys managed to do out of nothing, purely for passion. If you go to Planet Minecraft, you can download many of these projects. I know that the blocky graphics can't really compete with the fidelity of the textures and structure of Assassin's Creed Unity's representation. And it's super cool to be able to walk your character in such a detailed environment. However, to me, the possibility that Minecraft gives to pay your own homage to such a great monument probably gives even more a sense of unity, because people can also cooperate to symbolically rebuild Notre Dame inside Minecraft and make these huge buildings. And as you can see, their similarity to the real deal is stunning. In a sense, it's as if anybody can help in rebuilding it. And people can join their forces and talents to do it. I know this vision might sound too romantic to somebody, but to me, this is true unity. But what do you think of Minecraft? Do you play it? Did you visit Notre Dame created inside of it? Or in any other video game that I mentioned earlier on this list? Does Minecraft deserve the first place? No. No! Or should it have been Assassin's Creed? Certainement, monsieur. Just drop a comment and let me know. Yes, I heard you the first time. Thank you for seeing this video to the end. I hope you appreciated my heartfelt homage to Notre Dame. I really hope it can go back to its former glory. Also, I probably missed a video game or two where you can play inside a digital Notre Dame. And I'm sure that you guys can help me by writing in the comments down below any possible video game that I didn't mention in this list, but that you feel that could really fit in. I might do another video after this. If I have enough suggestions, why not? I would also make sure to give credit where credit is due and nominate you in the video itself. So if you have any other feedback, if you wish I handled things differently, or if you simply want to share your thoughts on Notre Dame, the incident, or the topic that we just spoke about, please let me know in the comment down below and I will read every single one of them. It will be nice to have a little chat about it. So thank you World Gamers for keeping me company in this small but significant journey and see you in my next video.